What is up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Money Gang Crypto. I am in the middle of the skies of London. Well, no, this is my green screen today. But I got a very important video about the SEC versus Coinbase. Now, this is very important for the whole of crypto because it was a big case in which we started to see some of the arguments that the SEC were making falling apart. And it was one of those cases where for me, I, I wanted to tune in, I wanted to listen, I wanted to find out, I wanted to see what arguments were being made in court and how competent the SEC were in terms of their litigation, in terms of their lawyers and their arguments that they are bringing forward. So for five hours today, I listened to the whole of the court case for the SEC versus Coinbase. Now, for those of you that don't know, the SEC were going after Coinbase, they were saying that they were breaking securities laws, and um, they were basically bringing a court case against Coinbase and also the 13, 12 to 13 tokens that were in it. So tokens like Solana, seen as a um, security, ADA, um, and many others. Now, as we know, or if you've not been in crypto for a long period of time, the SEC defined things based off of a principle called the Howey test, right? And the Howey test is from the 1940s in regards to what is a security and what is not classed as a security. Now, Bitcoin is not classified as a security because it is not a enterprise. However, every other crypto or many other cryptos, particularly the old coins, are classified as securities. So, there's a lot of confusion as to what's a security, what's not a security, the definition of a security and things of that nature. So I'm going to keep it pretty simple in, this, in today's video and just give you a bit of a run through of how things went with the judge. And for those of you that want to see more of this, you can go check out my Twitter profile. It's moneygangcrypto on x.com slash moneygangcrypto. And I have the full thread, even Ivan on Tech liked the thread. So shout out to Ivan on Tech as well. And it really made some views. It really got a lot of engagement because I was just updating on the spot. I was doing a lot of updates straight away. During the case, the judge was a very interesting individual. I mean, to me, she seemed almost annoyed at the way that the SEC were talking to, to her as a judge, right? She would ask pretty direct questions and the SEC would seem to talk about something completely different. They go off course and... She just wasn't buying it. And the SEC kept saying, the lawyer kept saying respectfully, respectfully, to the point where the, where the judge said to the SEC, hey, can you stop saying respectfully before, you know, proposing what you're saying? It's, it's getting a little bit annoying. So the judge was a little bit, um, I don't want to say sassy, but there was definitely a little bit of, she was, she was quite interesting to hear and listen to. And that's something that you can't really see in, in a text format. But she was very interested in what Coinbase was saying. And so um, I'll talk to you about the main points that came out of this case. So the first thing I want to point out was that the judge was constantly asking, why is crypto not its own thing? So when it comes to things of securities, commodities, etc., why is it not judged in a different category as it is a new form of investment? It is a new product. It is just like code on the internet. It is um, something that is relatively new. So why is it not judged as its own thing. What makes crypto not a collectible, for example, or a commodity? That was the question that the judge was asking the SEC. And the SEC just kept referring back to the Howey test. So they, they kept diverting to the Howey test as to how crypto falls into that, or in particular, the cryptos that they were going after, and also Coinbase as a third party that, that offers crypto. Coinbase made the argument that they actually deal with secondary transactions, that they don't represent an issuer, that wallets actually just connect to it and tokens are third party. So this was the thing where he was, he was saying, well, we are literally just in a sense like an IT company. We, we offer d different services, like as a, as a broker, we offer ways to purchase crypto. However, we don't dictate what the coins are doing. You know, we. we we, we just offer it as a service, okay? So I can't tell you if it's if it can be treated as a security or not. We are just literally something that you can use to connect and buy. So we are like a purchasing platform, kind of similar to, say, for example, if you were using a Chrome browser 
to then make investments in the stock trade, right? So you, you are using the Chrome browser as a piece of technology or software that you use in order to then connect to a website, say, for example, a stock exchange to then purchase up stocks. And then the judge kept asking the following, isn't me putting my money into a savings account kind of like the staking? So there was a point in time when they were talking about staking specifically and the availability of being able to stake some of these tokens and earn some yield on it. The argument was that that because they offer that as a, as a format, as a, a way of making some sort of yield, then it could be classified as security. And the judge said, well, if I'm putting money into a savings account, is that not kind of like staking? The judge then clarified with the SEC that it was indeed a security. And if it was indeed a security, wouldn't they have the right of rescission? And the SEC said yes. Now, for those of you that don't know what the right of rescission is, it's basically kind of like a cool off period or like a money back guarantee when you take out a financial instrument or product. See, in crypto, if you go and buy a token, you don't have the right of rescission. You don't have the right to be able to have a 30-day money-back guarantee. It doesn't work like that. Whereas in many financial instruments that are seen as securities, they have that right. So that is completely unapplicable to a security if crypto is a security. It is actually a privilege that a security has that crypto doesn't have. So how can the SEC classify it as a security, crypto as a security, if that right is not in place. The SEC then came back to the Howey test a lot and the judge started to talk about the expectation of profit from the work of others. There are four criteria that make up the Howey test and it goes the following. An investment of money in a common enterprise with the expectation of profit to be derived from the effort of others. That is what classifies something as a security. Now, the judge wanted to go back to point number three the third criteria, with the expectation of profit. And this is where things started to get really interesting because the judge starts playing out rhetorical questions, starts talking about certain things that may or may not be a security. The judge starts to have a rhetorical dialogue about saying, well, there are things that aren't securities that I expect profit from. For example, trading cards, double team shirts, or for example, Beanie Babies, things of those nature, they actually have an expectation of profit because they've become more and more valuable over time. And all collectibles and commodities could be classified like that. Let's say you have a coin collection, for example. Let's say you have a football shirt collection. Maybe you have those Beanie Babies. Maybe you have Pokemon cards. Those things would be classified as a security under this premise. And this definition is becoming way too broad. It's starting to show the cracks in the SEC's argument when it comes to crypto being a security. This to me was a turning point because the judge is starting to realize that this is a very silly law. It seems very redundant when it applies to things like cryptocurrency, which is just tokens that you're purchasing up. After this discussion, Coinbase reiterate their point that they offer broker services and they offer a wallet service, things like an exchange. However, they themselves cannot be a security if they just offer a service like that. It's kind of like a piece of software. Part of the main pitch of the SEC's closing argument and something that they had reiterated earlier on in the five-hour session was the following. Coinbase is an unregistered exchange and that the SEC has never approved a broker-dealer as an exchange because this is a unique platform to be able to have an exchange and also be a broker-dealer. That was their argument. Now, the judge asked very bluntly, well, is that against the law to be a broker-dealer that's also an exchange? And the SEC said the following, it is not illegal per se, but we've never approved an exchange, which is also a broker-dealer. And this is where the courtroom kind of had a little bit of silence. It was kind of like really, really strange admission by the SEC. The SEC then finalized their statement by saying that Bitcoin is not a security. And the reason why it's not security is because it doesn't have an ecosystem around it. And that was real interesting for Coinbase because on the spot in their closing argument, they took that admission and they used it and backfired it against the SEC saying the following, Bitcoin has barely any difference to the old coins that the SEC had gone after in this particular case, including 
Coinbase as a unregulated exchange. Bitcoin has support groups, it has developers, it has fan pages, promoters, it has all of that. How is that any different from, say, for example, a Cardano or Solana? What difference is there? There isn't any. And if the SEC says that Bitcoin is not a security, then why are the other altcoins not seen as non-securities? Why are they not seen in the same category and same light? The judge then ended the conversation and said that she would make a decision soon, but she couldn't make a decision on the spot. You can tell by the way people are speaking and their patience and how they react to certain individuals that they may be a little bit more favorable to one than the other. To me, it was fairly clear who had the best arguments. If I was to put my money down on who was going to win, and again, this is all speculation, please just understand this is what I heard, this is my own personal viewpoint, but I believe that Coinbase were in a great position given the admissions by the SEC and just the lack of good arguments. It was very poor arguments throughout. It seemed like they hashed it out. It was a case where Coinbase's arguments weren't necessarily the best, but they were able to adapt on the spot pretty well. And they had very, very good points that the judge actually wanted to interact with, asking follow-up questions and, and you know asking to explain a little bit more and trying to understand for herself. And she even thanked Coinbase at the end for giving her such great understanding of these topics. To me, this gave me a really good understanding of how good the SEC are in court. They've lost four of their last five cases against cryptocurrencies and cryptocurrency exchanges. We are seeing a little bit of incompetence. We're seeing the arguments that the SEC make and the broadness of their definition when it comes to the Howey test. People start to pull apart their argument and start to ask deeper, more meaningful questions of clarity, of understanding, of seeing what is a security? What isn't a security? Why is something a commodity and why is something not a commodity? Why is Bitcoin approved and why is other altcoins not approved? You know, you never know what could happen in these cases, but it's my belief that Coinbase will win this case. And it really showed me the incompetence of the SEC lawyers, regardless of the arguments they brought against Coinbase. Guys, if you like the video, please like, share and subscribe. Appreciate all of your time. I'll speak to you soon.